Hi guys, so I'm here today to show you one of my favorite curriculums that I've been using with my kids the past couple years, and that is the Peaceful Press, the Peaceful Preschool. Um, now I've seen several questions about this over the past couple months with school coming up, so I wanted to um, just take an opportunity to make a little video about how I implemented it with our family. So the one great thing about homeschooling is that you don't have to follow everything exactly, so I will, the things that I'm going to show you are what worked for us, and I just wanted to give you a little peek at inside um, this wonderful curriculum. So the Peaceful Preschool, what it does is it has um, a unit for, or a week for every letter of the alphabet. So the first week is gonna be letter A, and then letter B, and then letter C, etc. What I love about this curriculum is the book recommendations. So that is probably my number one thing. If the only thing that you get out of this curriculum is all of the beautiful living book choices um, that are used in this curriculum, that in and of itself is worth it to me. I was introduced to so many books that I personally had not read even as a child. So um, I was just very thankful for that opportunity. Um, one of the books that I had never read before was The Oxcart Man. And when we came to the letter O and I picked up that book, I kind of read through it real quick by myself just because the cover caught me. And I honestly like that stirred something in me because I just, I don't know, I'm kind of like this, I'm pretty sure I live in the wrong century and I probably should have lived 100 years ago. <laughs> um, but I just absolutely, or that book resonated with me. So if anything, uh, if you get anything out of this, the book recommendations are phenomenal and I just absolutely loved them. Um, just to kind of start out, one of the things that I love about this is that each week there is a memory verse. So for our family, um, hiding God's word in our heart is very important. So I loved the emphasis on the memory verses. Now, um, your family does not have to do that. Once again, that's something that it, you can skip if you wanted to. But for our family, that was very important because um, we really feel that hiding God's word in our heart is one of the most important things that we can do for our children. So um, I loved each recommendation for all of the scripture verses that are in there. And I'll actually show you in a little bit something that we did with those scripture verses too. Now there is a book list that breaks down at the very beginning all of the books alphabetically. Um, what I did is I actually printed this separately from my bound copy so that I could have it with me and take it to the library when I went to go look. Um, we went through this curriculum really slowly. We actually did two weeks per letter, so um, we actually stretched it over two years. My son was pretty young when we started it. Um, and so it gave us time to really savor the book. So what I would do is I would get probably like, mm, probably three different units at a time, so A, B, C, and, and then it would take us six weeks to get through all of those books. So um, there's around two to three books per um, letter of the alphabet, but they're all right here for you. Now the one thing, I keep saying the one thing, so there's a lot of things I like about this curriculum. One of the other things that I really like is the weekly grid. It's kind of like a, you can see everything at a glance and I enjoyed that. Um, when I first started this, I had not actually gotten this bound yet. So what I did was I just printed this page and just made sure that I knew how to do everything on the page. Um, Cause each week or each day is broken down into a little bit more specifics too. So it does break it down a little bit more specifically there. But on the at a glance, what I would do is I would print that off just this one page. And then as I would go, I just check it off. Okay, we did that, we did that, we did that. And you do not have to do it each day. So I kind of jumped around. I was looking at it and I'm like, hmm, oh wait, I don't have any apples today. So we're gonna skip off to another activity. Um, and then I'll just make sure to get some apples later that week. You guys, I am really bad when it comes to preschool stuff. Like I don't prep a ton. I basically just use what I have in the house. Um, it does not have to be expensive. Um, I just try to keep a lot of craft supplies on hand so that when I do come up to something, I have got it and some things if I didn't have it or did not have time to go and get it for that week, I did look I did look ahead some weeks, um, we just skipped it and that's okay. You do not have to do everything. Um, you should not be a slave to your curriculum. It should be a guide for you. So um, rather than being, um, I, sh I should say it's just, a, it's a good guide. So um, this is a good look at the letter A unit and if you have not purchased this yet, um, you can actually download the whole level or, um, or the whole letter A unit 
uh, just so you can kind of see the flow of how it works from week to week and that's a really good way for you to be able to see um, if you like the layout of it or not let's see here so like I said it kind of shows you a, a day by day breakdown too, something a little bit more specific I love the emphasis on reading aloud to your child. Um, if you read at the beginning of their curriculum, there is a big emphasis on make sure you're getting a lot of playtime outside with your children. Um, they focus a lot on fine motor skills and large motor skills. Um, let's see, what else was I gonna talk about here? Um, art skills was a big one, um, which some people are just not crafty and they don't enjoy doing that stuff. That is okay to skip. If you don't have to be or don't have to feel that you are bound by the curriculum um i found that my kids really enjoyed it but we did not do all of the craft stuff and i'm a crafty person but with three little ones in the house i did not have time to do all of the crafts so please don't feel bound to do that um, but i did love the fine motor and large motor skills um, emphasis that they had on that the large motor skills would be something like tossing a balloon in the air and playing balloon toss fine motor skills would be um, picking up uh, some grains and putting them into a little cup and counting them or like some of the things <clears throat> actually I'll show you some of the printables here that they have that come with it so I actually just laminated these but they have um, the number cards and they have the dots so that your child can count one two three and four um, but what we use these for was we would use um, like if we were using greens or actually apple seeds. So let's stick with the love, love, or like, <laughs> I cannot talk, the letter A unit. Um, we would put one seed inside this dot. Great fine motor skills, two seeds inside the dots, three seeds, four seeds, great fine motor skills activity, and they're learning their numbers. So there's that. <clears throat> one of the things that I have a, see a lot of people questioning is what do you do the glitter glue letters on because that's something that they have you do from week to week and I'm pretty sure that you do the glitter glue letters on these ones here in, in the printouts Actually, that may be. I did not do glitter glue letters you guys <laughs> that was not my thing um, I did not care if my kids did glitter glue letters it's supposed to be a tactile thing so that they can actually trace it with their fingers so you would put the glitter glue on here let it dry and then the next day they'd be able to tactilely trace the letter a with their fingers um so there was the, this would be what they would use that on they actually have it come in kind of like a cursive font as well so if you're wanting to introduce your child to a more italics or italicized or a cursive font um, they have that as well um, one thing that i did a little bit different or actually i guess i'll show you this so there's these letters that come in the printouts as well. Um, I know a lot of people used these um, to decorate. We actually opted to use them a little bit different. Um, when I say decorate, like for instance a, a bee, you might put blueberries all along in there. But as you can see, we've got a bunch of stickers in there. And these verses do not come on there. So what I did was I just took the PDF and I would copy and paste the verse onto there. And I actually used these as our scripture memorization for our morning time. So um, every time my child said the verse, they would get to put a sticker on there. They thought that was awesome for like the first 10 letters and then they just kind of got tired of the stickers, but we still used these. And I have all the verses on all of the letters there. Um, just so that in the morning I could be like, okay guys, B is for be ye kind, one to another. So um, that way they had a big visualization for that verse. My daughter still, when she sees the A, will talk about apples of gold and pictures of silver. So it just was a good visual for them to use it that way. Um, something that we did that was not a part of the curriculum that I wanted to show you anyways was we worked on doing handprint art. So for each letter this was something that we added into it and my kids loved this. And what I think is really neat is someone actually suggested to me to have it bound and I haven't done that yet but each kid did these all the way through the letter Z um, and you can see all of those um, on my Instagram page which is Little House Became a Home. Um, but I have all of these on there. <clears throat> so we did handprint art for every single letter. And I'm going to have these bound into a book. What a cool keepsake, you guys. I don't remember who um, suggested that to me, but I am so thankful that they did because this is going to be a really fun keepsake to show my kids years down the road. 
of all their tiny little hands. <laughs> so you might be wondering, what on earth does your day look like? So I've got three little ones. When we started this, I only had two, but I was pregnant at the time. Um, so what on earth did my day look like? This does not take all day. Like, mm, I probably spent maybe a half hour to an hour at the very most each day working on this. So what does the day look like for us? Well, for our family, we would get up in the morning and when we sat down to breakfast, I had on the table already a stack of books and I would just leave them sit there. And while the kids were eating their breakfast, we would go over our memory verse for that week or, and review a couple back to, I kind of circled through them just to make sure that we were reviewing as well. Um, and then I would read to them, I would read them the picture books that were sitting there until um, they were done eating. And then they'd get up and they'd go play. And then when I was finding that they needed to have a little bit more structure time, I would then pull this out and look at the other activities that were on there for that day or that week. Because like I said, I kind of jumped around and just picked what worked for us at that time. Um, what, what I do love is that they had a lot of like recipes and stuff. Um, getting your kids in the kitchen, it's a great way to introduce fractions um, and also just a lot of like hand-eye coordination and fine motor skills and large motor skills. So lots of opportunities to do that in the kitchen. So we would do that. Um, and there's actually, I forgot to show you this. It comes with a recipe book. And so what I did is I, I actually chose to print these in color because the pictures were really pretty. <laughs> but this is um, the apple crisp recipe. Oh my goodness, you guys, this was delicious. My uh, my husband and I may or may not have devoured it. Um, so the kids had fun helping me make the apple crisp. They weren't uh, necessarily a fan. They were kind of going through a picky eater phase at that time, um, but we really enjoyed doing that together. There's not a recipe for every single week, um, but they did have a lot of recipes on there throughout the curriculum. <clears throat> So I guess that's kind of how our day would go. It was nothing fancy. Like I said, most of it was done in the morning at the breakfast table because I've learned that full mouths are generally quiet mouths <laughs> and their hands are busy eating. So they enjoyed sitting there reading books and we would keep all the books sitting there. We would go back several weeks too and just reread all of the favorites and, and go from there. Like I said, if you get nothing out of this curriculum other than their great book selections, um, it's definitely worth it. But all of the resources um, from the letters, oh, which, speaking of which, I've heard that these letters, um, some people have boards that they keep in their schoolroom. You can hang them up there um, just kind of as a reminder, a visual reminder for what you are going over that week. Um, so you can do that as well, almost hang them like a banner. Um, so anyways, I guess that's a good look at how we utilize the curriculum. And like I said, if you want to see a little bit more in depth, you can download the letter A unit right on the Peaceful Press um, website. And yeah, if you have any questions, please let me know. This was something that we have really been enjoying and I plan on continuing to do it with my younger two as well. So I hope that was helpful for you.